Good day, everybody, and welcome. Um, we'll make a start very shortly. Um, just, uh, just waiting for a few more people to finish joining. Um, and as I say, we'll make a start. <clears throat> Good day, everybody. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Um, welcome to our participant webinar. This is our second one this week. We had our first one on Monday, and this is our second for this week. Um, <clears throat> my name is Tom Shorrock. I am an operations manager with the Duke of Edinburgh's International Award Foundation. On the call today, we also have uh, Lucy Hayter, if you want to give us a quick wave, and we also have Haynes de Bryn, who has uh, his camera off um, as he's providing us with some technical support during today's webinar. Um, and today's uh, webinar is going to be hosted uh, and uh, interviews done by uh, James McClements and Tarindra, who are on the call today, if you want to just give us a quick wave as well, and I'll let them introduce themselves uh, in more detail very shortly. Uh, and they will also be introducing our panelists uh, who are, we have three from Spain and two from uh, UAE, uh, Dubai specifically. Um, <clears throat> before we start today, um, we are just going to throw out a, a couple of questions for you um, through our poll. So we'd appreciate, <clears throat> excuse me, we'd appreciate uh, some responses just to get a feel for where you are, who you are and uh, how you heard about this uh, webinar. So first question is, how did you hear about this webinar today? <clears throat> Your choices are social media, your award coordinator, other award staff in your school or a parent. So if you'd like to just answer, uh, put in your answers for that poll, please. <clears throat> a few more people uh, needing to vote. Thank you very much, really appreciate it. It really helps us understand, you know, how we're getting our message out there about this webinar and other webinars um, for the future and how best to do that. So thank you, really appreciate the feedback. Okay, fantastic. Um, and we will uh, go now to our next two questions. So the next one is we want to uh, know if you are an award participant attending today. <clears throat> uh, yes or no. And the second question is if you're not a participant, what is your involvement um, with the award? Good to see we've got some participants on today. That's fantastic. Um, hopefully this will be extremely useful for you today. Just a few more people to vote, please. Thank you. Fantastic, thank you very much. Okay, 
Great. <clears throat> so good to see uh, we've got a good cohort there of participants. As I say, this will be really, really helpful for participants in, in particular, as this is being, uh, as our panelists today are participants themselves. And, uh, but if you're not a, a participant, hopefully this will be a great opportunity for you to learn all about uh, the award and in particular taking part in the award during a global pandemic. Okay, without further ado then, uh, I will pass over to James and Tarindra who will uh, take it from here. Over to you guys. Thanks very much, Tom. Uh, we are delighted to be here today and it's another fantastic opportunity to hear from our participants from right around the world about their experience during uh, what has been a really challenging year uh, during 2020, uh, but at a time when they've been able to continue going with their award activities. Uh, Tarindra, do you want to start off and introduce yourself? Hi everyone, lovely to be here. And my name is Tarindra Arama Perama. I'm from Sri Lanka and also one of the emerging leaders uh, representing the Asia Pacific region. And really looking forward to hear exciting stories and share wonderful messages with our audience today. Okay. Thanks, Trindra. And I'm James McClements. I'm also one of the emerging leaders representing the EMAS region. Uh, I'm a bronze, silver and gold award holder. And for my day job, I work for the Duke of Edinburgh's award in the United Kingdom. So it's great to see so many uh, young people and award leaders listening today. Uh, we hope you really benefit from this. And Tarindra is now going to introduce uh, our panelists. So welcome you all lovely panelists and amazing award participants today. And we're really, really excited to hear your great stories, how you've been continuing the award during the pandemic. And I really would like to, uh, start with Haya and introduce yourself today. Hi everyone, my name is Haya Salam. I go to Uptown International School in Dubai, the United Arab Emirates, and I'm currently undertaking the Silver Duke of Edinburgh Award. Thank you, Haya. Um, next, we'll go with Matteo. Hi, I'm Matteo from the British School of Barcelona, and I just finished uh, the Silver International Award. Thank you, Matteo. Um, Leila? Hi, my name is Leila Abdelberry. I go to Uptown School in Dubai, the United Arab Emirates, and currently I'm undertaking the silver level of the award. Thank you, Leila. Next, we'll go with Yingzu. Hi, I'm Yingzu. I'm from the British School of Barcelona, and I'm currently doing Gold Award. Thank you, Yingzu. And lastly, we have Kira. Hi, my name is Kira Smith. I go to the British School of Barcelona in Spain, and I'm commencing my silver award. Thank you everyone for introducing yourselves. And it's really amazing to have a, a diverse set of young people from Dubai and also from Spain. And all of you have completed your bronze awards. So I'm really happy that you have a lot to share with us. So I'll ask you firstly, um, how have you, or like which part of the award have you enjoyed the most during uh, continuing the award during the lockdown? And why was that? Is any um, of yes? Uh, for, my answer is not going to be surprising, but it's uh, the expedition because um, after the quarantine, being able to go with my friends in the mountain and um, spend a good time in fresh air, I, I really enjoyed that. That's lovely to hear. What an experience you've been able to get on with the adventurous journey after quarantine. Yeah. Thank you, Mateo, for that. Um, anyone else would like to share? Um, throughout the global pandemic, if it weren't for the DFB program, I probably would have found myself adopting a sedentary lifestyle. Therefore, the physical part of the program was probably the most enjoyable for me, as it helped me maintain a balanced lifestyle and make sure that I'm keeping active in the marathon, which is the pandemic that we're in. Definitely. That, that's very interesting to hear, Leila. Thank you for that. I myself have enjoyed a lot of physical recreation at home, so I can relate to that. Um, what about the others? Hey, do you want to share anything? Um, my favorite part of the award was probably that it comes with a great attainment. So when you complete the award, you're just like, yay, I did it. And although the, the award does require a lot of time and effort and dedication, it is actually very well worth it. 
that feeling when you finally take off your hiking boots and realize that you have completed your award is an immense feeling. Definitely, I could really agree with you there. Thank you, Hera. Does anyone want to go next? Kara, Kara you, or your hand up. Yeah, I just want to say that my favorite part was probably the sport as well, but for kind of a bit of a different reason, as well as getting out of a sedentary lifestyle, I also used a different way of doing my exercise. Instead of going for a run, I was using kind of a virtual world for cycling. So it kind of felt like even though I'm in lockdown, I felt kind of free because I was traveling around this world just doing exercise. That's, that's very interesting, Kara. Thank you for sharing that. Definitely. I, I would not think that um, pandemic would make physical recreation interesting, but wow, that's surprising great answers. Seeing so you want to go next as well? Yeah, so my favorite part is also the expedition. So um, I walk about 30 kilometers. And when you actually look at the Google map, you will see like how short the, like the distance is from your um, start to the destination, which is my favorite part. That's, that's lovely. It's always adventurous journeys definitely always make us feel like we've reached a lot of goals. and. Also, um, really like lovely to hear physical recreation being one of the favorite parts of the award uh, during continuing the award in a pandemic. So thank you guys for that. James, would you? Fantastic. So, uh, Kira, I think your your answer to the first question around being able to to use your cycling without actually leaving home is is a fantastic example of of overcoming a challenge uh, during. The pandemic and lockdown whenever you perhaps weren't able to go out and and do your running because you had to stay inside but i would like everyone to take a moment or two to think about how during the pandemic uh you had challenges to face with your award um so what what were the biggest challenges you had to overcome perhaps perhaps activities then that you didn't particularly enjoy because of those challenges uh what activity did you do uh for that so uh who would like to go first was your biggest challenge or, or an activity you didn't enjoy taking part in? Haya, go ahead. So although I didn't necessarily have to change any of my activities due to the circumstances presented by the um, pandemic, I still had to be very proactive in the way I approach these challenges. So for example, I volunteered as the backstage crew for my school production. And due to the lockdown, it obviously got cancelled. So I had to reach out to my teacher and ask her whether there would be different things that I could do like research on the play or um, investigate more on ways that I could improve the play if school were to ever reopen again. And this activity was actually my major activity at the time. So I did have to adjust it to make it my minor activity. And it just shows how much the DOV program is very adaptable in the way that we can change things due to any challenges presented to us. Uh, can we ask what the play was? Um, it was Oliver. Oh, excellent. Oh, and who were you going to be? Were you in the play? Um, I wasn't actually in the play. I was just the backstage crew. So I was doing the hair and makeup. Brilliant. Excellent. Uh, anyone else have any uh, challenges they had to overcome or perhaps a section you didn't, haven't particularly enjoyed doing? Matteo. Um, yeah. Um, I think it's not a challenge, but um, my, my only prob the only problem I had was that I was going to, or with some friends, we were going to organize a beach clean, but since the school closed down, there wouldn't be any students for it. So um, I had to change activities. So that was my service and I had to, I used Zooniverse to do a service online. Fantastic. And did you enjoy, did you enjoy the online activity? Yeah, I did. Great. Um, sorry, James, to uh, yeah. interrupt that. But there's a question that's come in through chat. Um, it's actually quite pertinent to what you've just been uh, speaking to Matteo about. Um, so somebody's asking uh, from the Netherlands. Um, so did you have to follow online lessons for school? And was doing the award next to that another extra busy thing to do or a welcome distraction? Oh, Leila. Leila. Put your hand up. Yeah. So I think it was definitely an added challenge, but... Um, it almost taught you how to prioritize your time and with being home more 
like it was easy to go into bad habits and like the Duke of Edinburgh program allowed you to be accountable for like what you spend your extra time doing. So working towards the goals while they had their challenges, it definitely helped you feel like you're using your time more valuable, more valuably and like learning skills that will help you throughout like every stage of your life. So it was definitely like a choice you had to make on how you want to spend your time doing, but it was re like rewarding at the end to achieve the award. Yeah, I think that's so true. And I think it's lovely to hear you saying that. Um, it's a challenge, but it's a worthwhile challenge and something that you, you feel the benefit of. Uh, Kira, you have your hand raised. I, I found that actually the Duke of Edinburgh was kind of a very welcome distraction because sitting at my desk all day trying to learn online was quite tedious after a while. So I welcomed the idea of having to go outside or into the garage where the bike was set up and do this virtual cycling. But also I found it quite challenging at times because where you've just been sat down all day, the last thing you really feel like doing is getting up and going for a bike ride. So I found that it was a welcome distraction, but hard to get going sometimes to complete it because you lose the willpower. And were you able to keep that going? Did you did you complete your activity or, or are you still uh, struggling along? No, I have completed it now. Um, I did manage to finish it during quarantine, but it took a lot longer than it should have been because I wasn't as motivated due to quarantine. But I think the Duke of Edinburgh at least made me do some exercise. Otherwise, I would have had a very sedentary lifestyle. Brilliant, brilliant. And Yingzu? Um, I feel like um, during quarantine, we have a lot more time. So I complete all my skills during quarantine and also service. Because, um, I, I'm, I, I did um, online service. So um, the pandemics actually gave me a lot of time to complete all this stuff. And it's not as stressful as what well, you might think. But once you actually get going, it's where everything flows. Excellent. And Haya? Um, so obviously by the approximately the sixth week of lockdown, it was it started like getting more more and more boring. So I had to become more creative about how I choose to spend my day every day. And obviously I decided that it would make it would make it worthwhile if I took these times and turned it into a more of a learning learning experience. So with my Duke of Edinburgh Award, I had my skills section, which was an opportunity to improve my linguistic skills in French. So during the time, life was obviously filled with a lot of uncertainty, but I chose to control what was under my control rather than focusing on the negative aspects of things. Lovely. Yeah, I think that's so important. And, and the award definitely gives you that ability. Uh, how, how have you got on with your French studies? Um, so I took 26 hours of courses online. It was difficult at first because I used to take these courses um, face to face. But, you know, as the lockdown it all happened suddenly, so I just had to make that quick change. Brilliant. I'm quite impressed. You you got to week six before you were bored. I think I was bored by about day six. So well done. Trindra, do you want to pick up the next question? I'm really excited and to hear all these fascinating answers and how you've taken up challenges as young people during this uh, really challenging uncertain times. So um, I think uh, we've already like uh, got a lot of uh, responses for this, but if I may also ask from everyone, um, did you by any chance uh, change any of your activities due to the during the pandemic? And from what activity did you change from and to? Kara, go ahead. Yeah. So my sport I chose as my major section um, in my bronze. And before quarantine started, I was completing it as netball with my team after schools. Um, but when we went into lockdown, school stopped. So my netball team, I wasn't able to complete netball anymore. So I had to then come up with a new way to do it. And my dad and I looked at different ways to continue sport. And that's when we come up with this cycling. Right, so do you find cycling interesting now? I mean, I think it was quite fun because instead of just 
you know, facing a wall or something cycling, cycling around this virtual world, you were always exploring it and they had kind of different quirks around the world that was quite fun and it kept you going because otherwise just cycling for half an hour in front of a wall is can get quite tedious. Definitely. But I'm really proud of the fact that you've kept going uh, with the resiliency during such, uh, you know, a crucial time. So that's very amazing. Who wants to go next? A anyone else? Leila, yes? So within the skills section, I didn't change the aim of my goal, though I adapted the way which I approached it. Uh, my school was to develop my leadership skills, which I acquired through a system at our school. And the system, like, consists of weekly meetings and tutoring younger students. The overall aim is to increase the opportunities that the school offers. So then transitioning to um, distance learning, it meant that like meetings weren't possible anymore. So I decided to combine a group of students and we created a website, which we now use this year to display all the upcoming events and like what's coming up for people to be more aware of what to look forward to. All right, thank you, Leila, for sharing that. So how interesting was it? How, how was it when coming up with distance learning from a very face-to-face -face ex experience? I mean, you definitely had to uh, take advantage of the use of technology and how like, it became much easier to communicate. Um, you had to kind of think out of the box. And although it was challenging, you had to like, change your mindset and just know like this is the situation you're in. And it's your choice how you choose to approach it, like whether you're going to use it to your advantage or just think of the challenges it comes with. And I tried to take the positive aspects of it and think of how I can better the future of the school using this skill section. I really like the fact that you said you can, how you can better the school with the opportunities you get uh, during whatever the challenges that you might face. So this is clearly a really fantastic way of us young people being adaptable for situations. Um, Heya, do you wanna share anything? Inzu, Kira. All right, okay guys. So that was really amazing responses to hear because um, we definitely, uh, when, while we were doing the award, it was um, not a lot of uncertainty we have to face, but it's, it's so fascinating to see how brave you guys have been and uh, how adaptable you were in continuing the award. James? Um, Thanks. Sorry, James, sorry yeah. to interrupt. Uh, we've got a, a question sort of linking into that, uh, about your last question there, Tarindra, um, for someone in the audience. Um, so the question is, how did you find that the service section worked remotely? Right. A... So who wants to go first about how doing the service section probably online or like would be during a pandemic? Was it? How was the experience, if you would like to share about it? Hi, you have popped up your hand. Yes, So for me, it was mainly about the fact that my goal was no longer attainable anymore because I was volunteering in a school production. So what I did was I had to message my teacher and ask her if there were any alternatives to this. And she provided me with a list of activities that I could do. So what I had to do was I collaborated with my costume design team online and we talked together about the different aspects that we could include if the play were to ever come back to life which obviously it didn't but it was it was a good experience because we got to um broaden out our knowledge about costume design and the play background in itself so definitely utilize the the rest of the time to get your knowledge more about all these plays and the costumes. That's amazing to hear, actually. So I see Yingzu, you want to contribute as well. So um, before lockdown, I did um, environmental awareness for my school as service, but then I had to switch to online service and I I used a website called Zooniverse where um, you can help scientists to collect data. And that's part of my service during lockdown. Right. So how has the experience been to science this? It's quite convenient as you can just go online. Also, my service was to um, find mitochondria 
from microscopic photos and help uh, the scientists to like count how many mitochondria there in the photo. And that's quite um, like convenient and as I said, and it's easy to attain the goal or service. Also, Yimsa, could I ask another question? Because you, you just told us about mitochondria being a part of your service. And has this uh, activity has been helpful with your education as well? Yeah, um, this, like the service also helped me to like identify mitochondria in a black and white photograph. It's easier and then now in biology, it's quite useful to identify the structure of the cell. Thank you so much for sharing that, Yingzu, which shows us that non-formal education and formal education strikes a perfect balance with the award program. Mateo? Uh, yeah, um, I wanted to add on uh, what Yingzu said, because I was also doing an environmental awareness um, service and I switched to universe and I wanted to say that I really rec recommend it if you don't have any ac access to any um, online service because there are a lot of different opportunities especially if you like science like me or Yingzu there are a lot of very interesting opportunities. Definitely thank you so much for sharing that Matteo brilliant dances. Moving back to James. Thank you. Um, and we had some brilliant examples on Monday as well of some really fantastic online service opportunities. So uh, someone talked at length about how much they've enjoyed taking part in the Missing Maps exercise to support the Red Cross. So there's lots of fantastic opportunities to complete uh, your service section online. So we're going to come to each of you for this question because I think it's it's quite important. And Matteo, we're going to come to you first. So just giving you warning that I'm going to come to you straight after the question. So. Uh, what have you learned about yourself so far doing the award in this unusual time? Should I start? Yeah, go for it. Uh, <laughs> can I can I not start? Yeah, can, uh, yeah. Can if I have someone some else, time to think? Yeah, to have have a moment or two to think. Does that, yeah? Hi, you you've you've come up with an answer. Go ahead. Okay, so during the global pandemic of COVID, it was certainly an eye-opening health disaster of nature, which touted everyone about the significance of self-care, which is vital for our own survival and well-being. So sitting at home for three months did not obviously come very naturally. I had to try and reorient my life and remember that there was no better time than today. In particular, it was very important that I learned to live my passion and have a hobby. So the Duke of Edinburgh Award was a perfect opportunity for this because it helped me overcome this challenge. It taught me to never make my life too people dependent and you know, uh, make peace with myself, especially when I have all of the time in the world. So instead I embraced all of the time that I currently had and I tried finding something that excited me. So something that excited me was the uh, skills section of my award, which was learning the French language. So I got into action, I reignited my passion back and I took these unprecedented times and turned it into a very valuable learning experience. Thank you. I think if we if we asked for the perfect answer to that question, that was almost it. I think that was, uh, yeah, uh, just fantastic. Um, and so, so lovely to hear. Um, does anyone else want to go ahead with what you've learned about yourself during, especially taking part in your award over the last year, Kira? Well, as well um, as kind of realizing that I shouldn't be completely people dependent, I also realized I shouldn't let my environment and situation dictate what I am doing and what I should be doing with my life. And I think that the global pandemic was a really good example that even though I am quarantined and I'm stuck in my house, I'm still able to do everything that I could normally do as a person and that I require and need to do. So the sport, I could still do sport. I could go for a run. I, and it helped me kind of find different ways around it and complete different obstacles that normally you wouldn't have thought of in normal life because you could just go to the shops, you could just head out somewhere. So it was quite helpful to look at the world with a different perspective. Fantastic. I think that's something we've all had to learn to do over this last year, isn't it? You know, things that we used to take for granted, we've had to learn how to do in a different way. And actually adjusting our award programs to fit as well has been 
has been a challenge, but one that I think we've all been able to overcome. Uh, Yingzu, Leila, or Mateo. Mateo, you have your hand raised. Go ahead. I thought of something. <laughs> Great. Um, I think something I realized was um, in opposition to what Heya and Kira said, which is um, my need to be with others. I, I usually don't identify me as someone people dependent, but during the quarantine, I realized that after a week of not talking to my friends, I really wanted to be with them. And um, so I resorted to doing my sport um, on every week or well, every day. On a, on a phone call with a friend that was also doing the international award. And so, um, yeah, it was, uh, I, I learned that um, it's important um, to keep maintaining a relationship with others. Fantastic. And Lila? So completing the award during these unprecedented times taught me that I'm genuinely a person that likes to stick to routine. Um, the program taught me that you can take control of how you organize your time and how to take initiative and responsibility for what you spend your time doing. Uh, working towards each goal in the program allowed me to ensure that I'm using the extra time that I now had in distance learning more valuably and ensured that I maintained a balanced lifestyle. Um, I would say that it firsthand showed me the power of having a drive and how that allows you to be resilient. The program taught me how to approach challenges, persevere and adapt to changes. Like, for example, changing aims may have not been ideal, though it was doable, and I ended up learning new skills because of it that may not directly link, link with the program, but because of um, having to adapt and be more flexible, it allows you to persevere and continue even when things don't necessarily go your way. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, yes, I think your, your comment there that it may not directly relate to the program is one thing, but the brilliant thing about the, the Duke of Edinburgh's International Board is actually it helps shape the full person for life and work and, and all of those challenges that you face. So while you may experience something taking part in your award that you think might not be directly related, actually the, the program helps you in your entirety to, to, to shape you for your future life. And I think it's something that's really important to remember as you're taking part. Uh, Yingzu, I think you're the only person we haven't heard from so far for this question. Have you anything you'd like to add? I'm not sure though. Okay, no, that's fine. Not a problem. Uh, Charindra, would you like to pick up? I was clearly impressed by most of these answers and I think I've taken some of them down as well, especially um, Kira here and like all, Leila, all of your answers, Matteo, because I, I really like the fact what Kira said was, I'm not letting a situation or, um, sort of uh, take part or to con take control of my life and what I want to achieve. So that's really very interesting to see how young people take ownership of uh, their lives and with mere leadership, they're trying to achieve their goals, fantastic. Um, so I would like to ask uh, all of you, uh, I think this question was definitely answered as well, uh, but um, you can speak more specifically about it as well. So did you choose to help anyone directly affected by the pandemic as a part of your award program? It can be from the service or skill or physical recreation section. Um, did, were you able to, okay, Leila? So experiencing how isolating and lonely this pandemic can make one feel, um, I decided to try and support the elderly who are impacted by the pandemic. So as part of my service this year, I do weekly calls in which I help and befriend the elderly. I try to talk with them, listen to their stories, and sometimes play games with them with the hopes to just make them feel a little less lonely uh, through this all. That's wonderful to hear, Leila. So what medium do you use? Like, do you use online calls or something like that or yeah I use uh, online calls and for example like uh, some of the elderly I know are professors or teach used to teach in-person classes so they may not be as used to using technology so I've tried to help them navigate through zoom and how they can give their lessons through the use of technology that's wonderful to hear. I hope they had a great time with Leila and um, definitely the isolation can do so much of uh, impact on mental health and everything. So it's really nice to hear um, how you've uh, um, helped someone else during the pandemic. Is there anyone who wants to contribute to the answer as well or share your experiences of how you helped? Yes, Matea? Um, 
I'm not sure if what I'm going to say is 100% answering this question, but I think it's going to be useful for, uh, for some people. But um, during this pandemic, I used Be My Eyes, um, which is a, an application to help blind people. And I'm not sure if they're affected by the pandemic, but it was um, at least af after helping them, I could talk to them. Um, it's uh, similar to what Leila said. And um, I really recommend this application to, to anyone who would want to do a service because um, you install it. And then when someone blind needs, to, needs some help in a, to do an everyday task, they, they call. And if you pick up, then you just help them. It's very easy. And you have a great feeling of satisfaction after. That's amazing, actually, Matteo. Would you be able to share, share the uh, name with us again? So that anyone who wants to take it down. It's called Be My Eyes. Do you want me to type it in the group, in the, in the chat? Yes, please. If you can. So, okay. it, so it would be great for any young person out there willing to help someone and not finding different ways to do that. Be My Eyes. So I'm really happy of the ways you're trying to reach out to different people and being able to provide your service uh, during a much needed time. Brilliant work, uh, Matteo. Um, Kira? I mean, this is more of just kind of supporting people, but um, I've been a tutor helping ki little kids in maths and English for about four years. But when it came to the pandemic, I normally do it in class, like live. Um, so when it came to the pandemic I decided to just kind of stop working and everything but then I realized that quite a few of the kids that I teach were going into year one or year three so they were changing um kind of levels in school and they were quite far behind because they weren't learning or anything so I decided to swap to a medium online and continue to try and teach these kids online so that they didn't go into year one and year three completely baffled and confused um, about what is happening because they don't happen to be native in English. Right. That, that's wonderful experience, Kira. Would you like to share us uh, how that experience has been and how the kids have reacted to it as well? Because we've seen that a lot of online education is happening and it's not the easiest to deal with as well. So how is that experience? I mean, from a teacher kind of point of view, it can be quite difficult because before the class, you need to come up with very different ideas because I'm working with kids who are aged about four to seven. So they're quite young, they're, they get distracted quite easily. And online as well, you're not really there to kind of sit them back down in the chair or anything. So it was a lot more you having to find games online and you're trying to teach. I did a lot of PowerPoints with kind of games and quizzes on them. To, get, to keep them distracted quite a lot of the time, I would get them up and do some sort of physical thing to help them remember different words, family members, they had to do some drawings and then they'd have to, I would say, draw a tree and they would have to do, so it was kind of using different ideas, but it was quite difficult to pull it together. So it gave me, um, it gave me a lot more respect for my teachers who are teaching me a year 11 student um, online all day it gave me quite a bit of respect for them because though we can be more occupied and stay focused for longer it still must be quite difficult yeah definitely Kira um, and also I really like how you've prioritized your time in preparing um, presentations or like different activities for these uh, little kids that's really beautiful to see how you balanced everything out um, and uh, doing all these services for much needed at much needed times. So thank you for sharing, Kira. Um, I think Yingzu and Hale, do you want to share something with us as well about this question? Yeah. All right. Okay. So thank you so much for all your great responses, everyone. Because um, during a pandemic, life can be difficult for all of us. But I think you've all looked up to it and uh, you're doing brilliant, actually. And uh, you're taking real ownership of your lives. Thank you for all these amazing answers, guys. Um, moving back to James. Thank you. So we're coming up now to the last formal question, uh, which, uh, which I'm about to ask. And again, I'm going to come to you all because I think this is a, a lovely opportunity for you to uh, give some advice to young people out there who are uh, debating 
starting their award or perhaps are currently taking part uh, and struggling and need a bit of guidance and advice. So the question this time is what advice would you give to other young people thinking about starting their award now but they're just unsure? Haya, we'll let you go first. Okay, so the length of the the length of time it takes to achieve the award obviously dep depends on the level that you are undertaking. Um, the award requires dedication and time, so you obviously might be thinking, why would I go to all of this effort just to complete an award? Well, to begin with, Duke of Edinburgh is an excellent opportunity and way to make new friends and meet new people. So working together in the wilderness on your expedition actually helps you form new bonds and great memories. And on the other hand, completing the service section of your program is also like an equally great way of making friends because through volunteering, you're going to meet many people of different backgrounds in a working environment, which prepares you for the working world. So speaking of the working world, um, finding employment is obviously very difficult. There is so much competition over one job and having the DV award on your CV might just give you the edge over other applicants. So employers highly respect this award and they value it. And it just demonstrates a well-rounded, confident individual who can work independently and is part of the team. So if you're looking for that extra step to, um, to go ahead with your chance of success, then this award is definitely for you. And my absolute favorite part of the award is just the expedition section. So it's a chance to do something different and most importantly, learn how to be an explorer. It is so easy to sit on the couch and just not venture far, but the Duke of Edinburgh program definitely uh, motivates you to get outside. You get to sleep under the stars, witness incredible scenery and natural landforms, which you definitely do not get to do while sitting at home. So if you've got the chance to complete your DOV award, then just go for it. I can guarantee you that you'll thoroughly enjoy it and benefit from the learning experience that comes along with it. Thank you very much. And I think, I think that the, the one of the key points I think you picked up earlier was the uh, the fact that employers really do value uh, seeing a DAV award in people's CVs, um, and it stretches beyond employers. You know, whenever you think about the number of people applying for one university space, um, again, people people recognise the award. It's it's internationally renowned, and I think it does stand out. Um, in my day job, I I interview people quite quite a lot for for jobs and, and i love seeing people's applications coming in where they tell us about their award experience and um, i know they're applying to come and work for the duke of edinburgh's award when i'm interviewing them but it's still lovely to be able to tease out uh the the fact that they are a well-rounded individual and generally we can trace that back to their their involvement in the award so i think you really highlighted that well thank you very much um anyone else want to give us your advice for someone who's wondering whether they should start doing their award uh kara go ahead well following on from what Haya said it's not all about um so it's about obviously making bonds with new people and helping others but it's also if you do it with my friends I remember we didn't get to do our final expedition but we got to do our practice one and I did it with my friends and during the award and during the expedition there are a few rough times when we're trying to work out which way to go and there's two sides to the argument and there were some bickering but I think overall we come out a lot stronger as friends and we felt more confident in trusting each other because we, even though it's just two days that's all it takes because you're out there you're on your own you have to rely on each other to remember to bring stuff to go the right way to read the map correctly as well as bonding and meeting new people and getting to feel good like she said you're not on the couch anymore you are out in the open and it gives you a new sense that you can do stuff like this, even if you're not a very active person, if you've had some injury or something previously, that's kind of caused you to not be as active as you normally are or as you wish to be. This is quite an easy way to say, I can do this. I can do this 30, 40 kilometer walk in two days, even though I've just come back from this sporting injury, which had happened to me. I injured myself quite badly in netball um a couple of about a couple of months before we did the expedition so I had to wear a knee brace while doing this 
hike, but I managed to complete it. And afterwards, though at the time I was aching a lot, it felt really good to go, even though I've been on crutches, even though I've been sat on the sofa for the last three months, I finally, I know I can do this. And if I can do this, there's a lot more that I can do. And now I'm completely, I'm so much stronger and I have no regrets. And do you, do you put that all down to your participation in the award? Do you think that's that's the key to all of this? I think if I hadn't started trying to prepare for this hike and do this hike and not want to let my friends down by saying I don't want to continue the Duke of Edinburgh because of my knee, um, I probably would still be very unfit. I wouldn't be participating in the sport. And I don't think I would have recovered as well. But the fact that I had to, I couldn't let my friends down and I had to say, I'm doing this hike, it then just made everything like I sat here and I was like, okay, well, I need to get ready for this hike. And I started training, I started getting fitter and more positive because of the exercise and the serotonin so without this award I probably would have got a lot worse due to my injury but thanks to the award I'm now healthy and better for it. Excellent I, I think that's a fantastic message. Uh, Yingzu go ahead. So from an international work um, what one valuable stuff is that I learned self-discipline and time management it helped me a lot by managing my time and I can free lots of time to do the award and learn new skills and also focus on my schoolwork. And secondly, I made uh, lots of friends during expedition because I was the only year 11 girls who was in the group. So I had to go on an expedition with the year uh, 12 or last year. And I met them and then we made friends and we took like beautiful photographs of the landscape and um, we really enjoyed our expedition. And for service, um, I really like, I have my school to kind of establish a paper recycling um, like system in primary and secondary. And that's uh, like, so not just myself benefit from this award, but also my school. Excellent, thank you very much. Uh, Lala. So the advice I would give someone who's unsure about starting the program is to approach it with an open mind and like be excited about the person this award teaches you to be. You should be willing to work hard, but the abundance of skills and attributes you develop makes it all worth it. Also, I would say don't necessarily look at it as a number of hours you have to achieve, but try to like immerse yourself into the skills you're developing and like how that's helping you. So look at it as like becoming a whole rounded learner as opposed to just completing the specified uh, hours for the award. Sure and if you think back over your award program what skills do you feel you've you've gained that that you wouldn't have gained otherwise if you weren't taking part? So first and foremost like definitely my time management skills and like prioritizing my time. Um, last year definitely came with its challenges and becoming uh, more able to adapt to uh, different things that I encounter and making sure that I'm persistent. And even if things like don't necessarily go the way it's planned, not to give up, but to keep working and to find different solutions. And I'm sure that this is a skill I'll have to make use of like for my whole life, basically. Um, and I also like became passionate about like new things that I never knew I'd be passionate towards. Uh, like playing the piano. I never played the piano before starting this program, though this program taught me a new skill and now it's something that I want to continue even after um, achieving the award. Fantastic. And I think that's I think that's nice that you find something through your award participation that you do want to continue on with, that you don't just do it for the duration of your program and then let it go, but it's something that you can you can keep doing in the future. So thank you for sharing that with us. James, could uh, yes. just relating to your question there, um, I know Haynes put out a question to our audience um, along that thread, um, but um, could we ask our audience, and you can type this in the chat, what is one word to describe how you felt taking part in the award during this time? Uh, this is to participants in particular, um, but that would be fantastic to hear from our audience. So one word, how you felt taking part in the award during this time. I'm going to pop that in the chat. While our audience are typing to some of our uh, participants on, on screen, do you want to give us the, a word on how you felt when you were taking part in your award? Go ahead, Kara. 
probably the word that I would have to use is proud, proud for me, proud for my friends, proud for the school being able to continue throughout the COVID and the pandemic and being able to pursue the Duke of Edinburgh and getting our award even through difficult times. Yeah, I think that's fantastic. And I think you do feel that sense of pride. I completed my own gold award perhaps 15 years ago. And, you know, your chest does slightly puff up a wee bit whenever you're popping your gold badge onto your jacket, whenever you're going out to a nice event. You know, there is, there's definitely a sense of pride comes with being an award holder. Thank you. I see someone has responded with distracted. <laughs> Very good. Great. Um, I don't know if we had any other uh, any other uh, panelists wanted to respond to that question at all. Hiya, if your hand popped up. Um, so there's obviously a great sense of satisfaction. Um, once you tick off your personal goals for each of the uh, different sections, you'll find yourself with a really great sense of satisfaction, as in like, I did it. And I think so can anyone who tries the Duke of Edinburgh Award is a perfect opportunity for you to learn about any strengths or weaknesses that you may have. And it also allows you to work on these things that you're not very good at. Yeah, absolutely. And it is that personal challenge. So it's it's challenging yourself for those things that perhaps you, you don't think that you will be very good at at the outset. So you've all talked really passionately about how much you've enjoyed taking part in your physical activity. For some people, that might be the part that they're not looking forward to. And it is that personal challenge and finding a challenge that's suitable for you. Uh, anyone else want to, to give us that, that word before we, we sum up the, the word of how you felt when you were taking part? Matteo, I feel like you, you have a burning answer for us. I felt, honestly, I felt motivated because during the quarantine, when it's it's hard to motivate yourself if, if you don't have anything on your list, any anything to do. But I always had something to do thanks to to the Duke of Edinburgh. So it, it motivated me to do more. Fantastic, excellent. That's awesome. Um, just one. Actually, we've got one more. Um, and if I, I think it's Salad. Uh, sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name here. Uh, in the audience saying feeling wonderful by giving back to the community and the award made me what I am today. So I think that's a really really lovely sentiment and um, and hopefully you five as panelists and participants and continuing your awards uh, also feel that uh, across the board you know service or otherwise um so yeah um james and Turinja, were there, was there anything else that you wanted to put to our panelists for uh, today um before we close off or no, I think we've had some fantastic answers um, and I think I think you've all contri contributed fantastically. You've given a real good overview of your participation during this really challenging time um, and really given us that sense of how you have persevered during the challenges to keep going with your award. And I think your encouragement for other young people to take part has been fantastic and something I know Tarindra and I are really keen that as many young people grab this opportunity and take part as possible. That's great. Thank you, James. Um, so, well, on that note, then, um, we'll uh, call, uh, bring today's webinar to a close. Um, it leads me to say a huge, huge thank you to James and Tarindra first for uh, chairing the webinar and asking wonderful questions uh, to our wonderful panelists. Um, thanks to Lucy and Haynes. Uh, but most importantly, thank you to the five, our five panelists today, um, Paya, Leila, Matteo, Yingzu, and uh, thank you so much, Akira. Sorry. Uh, I thank you so much uh, for your time, uh, for your wonderful answers. Honestly, some fantastic answers there. Thank you so, so much. And uh, I wish you all uh, good luck in the future with your awards that you're currently completing. And if you're not already on gold, that you are reaching up to that gold level eventually. And Yingzu, especially, good luck with completing your gold. Um, and thank you, of course, to our audience today for attending wherever you are in the world. Much, much appreciated and hope that it has been of great use. Uh, and so I will wish you a good day or good morning, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Thank you very much and have a safe uh, time. Bye-bye.